I've been flying in my forest and it's easy to lose track of where I am, so I was hoping a GPS would help. I had to do some research to discover that there is a pointer to home in the beta flight options, which means I can wander freely through the trees and always know which way to fly towards home, and that pretty much made up my mind. I also like having altitude, speed, distance to home, flight distance, and coordinates that could help me find it when it crashes in the deep leaves. A compass is nice, but less necessary than a pointer. I've already added a buzzer to the Pavo 20, which is necessary to find it when it's buried in the leaves, and it has an LED strip around it, which helps a lot also. I already had a Flywoo GPS with compass, but the Pavo 20 Pro flight controller doesn't have pads for wiring a compass, so I had to find another GPS module. I could have connected the four GPS wires and left the two compass wires disconnected, as shown in the Beta FPV flight controller diagram, but I decided to use that one in the Flylens 75 and find another for the Pavos. I did more research to find another and chose the HGLRC Mini M100. Both are less than 3 grams and both are M10 chips. My first concern was soldering the tiny pads. Fortunately I have a magnifying visor with a light. It would have been really difficult without it. But at this stage I didn't know what kind of rabbit hole I was falling in. Make sure the antenna wires are correct. Wire colors are not standardized between brands. So pay attention to your particular GPS. TX goes to RX. RX goes to TX. Make sure solder or wire strands aren't touching the next pad. I first tried mounting it flat on top of the O4 unit with the wires tucked away underneath. I wasn't getting a very strong signal, so I added a piece of foam, slanted slightly backwards so the GPS would be flatter when the quad was pitched forward. On the Flyland 75, I had to add a piece of foam for a mount just to get it above the battery. I still wasn't getting a good signal on the Pavo, so I tried some aluminum mounts to get it up above and away from the O4 unit. I tried several of these. I wasn't happy with those either. One time the fly lens would do better, the next the Pavo would be better, but they could both take up to six minutes to get the eight satellites required by the default setting of Betaflight. This required setting them on a fan to keep them cool. I took to starting them with one battery and changing it to fly. Next I pulled the wires out from underneath the O4 unit and moved the GPS as far as I could get it away from the electronics. And that was on top of the motor on the front there. I mounted it on a foam block, rounded it at the bottom to reduce turbulence, slanted backwards at the top to flatten the GPS when the quad was pitched forward, and stuck it down with mounting tape. In the meantime, I was getting the feeling that the M100 wasn't doing very well, and looked for another brand of GPS, and picked the Secure M1012. All of these are less than 3 grams, and all are M10 chips. I installed the Secure on the second Pavo 20 Pro, and tested them against each other, trying several shielding methods, including copper foil and grounded aluminum foil. After more tests than I cared to count, I felt the Secure was not doing as good a job as the HGLRC and installed an M100 on the second Pavo. Now it was just down to mounting differences between the two. I tried twisting the power and ground wires separately from the antenna wires, which were also twisted, then gave the whole bundle some twists. I ran it neatly along the frame but this didn't perform as well as the other with just the four wires twisted together. So I untwisted the bundle, mostly untwisted the antenna wires, and pulled the now longer wire over to the side away from the other electronics. And now this was performing as well as the first Pavo, and both were picking up five satellites in about 90 seconds. So I changed the Betaflight minimum satellite setting in the failsafe tab to 5, and now I could take off in about 90 seconds from powering up. 
Interesting side note, the Pavo 20 Pro LED light connection is by default at the rear under the power cable. It takes a lot of abuse back there when plugging and unplugging batteries on the USB cable and I've had several wires break off their connections. So I moved it to the front under the camera where it is protected. The LED wire to the flight controller can be routed to the front just as easily as to the back so it's not a problem. It's much safer up there and I appreciate it not being in the way when I'm plugging in batteries. But there's one more thing to try. I found a couple of videos with folks that powered the GPS before the rest of the quad with some rather complicated wiring tricks. This reduced the electronic interference from the other components and let the GPS work better. I didn't like their wiring idea as much though. So I plugged the quad into Betaflight before I flew it, let it gather what satellite data it could for a couple minutes just from inside the window, then unplugged it powered it up and now is getting eight satellites in a minute. This raised the next question of how do I power it outside? I did some more research searching for different questions and found a post asking the next question that I was thinking of. Can I power the flight controller and GPS from the USB port with a USB power bank leaving the O4 unpowered? And someone answered that they had done that with some other video system. So on the next day, to be sure of a cold start, I plugged in Pavo 1 into the power bank outside for a minute and 30 seconds, unplugged it, plugged the battery in, looked in the goggles, my two minute timer went off and it had 10 satellites. Then I plugged Pavo 2 into the power bank for two minutes and 30 seconds, unplugged it, plugged the battery in, looked in the goggles, my three minute timer went off, and it had 12 satellites and at altitude it went up to 15 and mostly held them when it descended. Time of day seems to make a little difference around here on how many I pick up. I'll make a note that I have a fan that I set them on to keep them cool. That was mostly important when the O4 was powered up, but I still use it when they're plugged into the power bank. So that's my current method. Take the quad outside, set it on the fan, plug it into the power bank, let it sit for two minutes or so, unplug it from the power bank, plug in the battery, and take off with 10 to 14 satellites depending on the time of day. The battery hasn't been drained by sitting around plugged in. I get more satellites in less time. It holds on to most of them flying under the trees, and I'm finally satisfied with how the GPS is working. And that was quite the rabbit hole. Here are the important settings in Betaflight. Mine was soldered to the R1 and T1 pads. So over on the sensor input, it's set to GPS. Mine shows 115,200 baud rate, so that's what I chose there. You could put auto. Be sure to save and reboot before leaving that screen. Go to the GPS page, turn on the GPS, choose U-Blocks if that's what your GPS specifications suggest. Auto config should already be turned on. You can turn on Galileo, which is the Italian GPS satellite system. And I have set the home point once turned on. That means home point is set when I plug in a battery. If I disarm and rearm, my home point is still the original home point. If this is turned off, if you disarm and rearm, the home point becomes that location. That's going to be up to how you fly. Ground assistance type, I chose North American because that's where I am. You can leave it on auto select. When you reconnect, you should see the GPS icon at the top turn red. If it isn't, recheck the port and GPS settings, making sure they were saved. Next, you'll have to choose what you want on your goggles display, the OSD, and where you want them to be. This is my FlyLens 75 OSD. 
The artificial horizon and horizon bars were an interesting test, but I don't use them on the pavos because they clutter up the screen where I'm trying to see small trees and twigs. This one has a compass, so the compass bar is there. That's also not on the pavos because they don't have compasses. When you're done checking everything off and positioning them on the screen, be sure to save this screen before you leave. Now is a good time to return to the setup page and calibrate. Considering I've had some calibration errors after using Betaflight, I've been going to a different page like the GPS page and pushing the save and reboot button to make sure the calibration takes effect. I'm not using GPS rescue yet. In the forest it would just fly up and get stuck in the trees. The only time it would be useful is when I was flying above the treetops and lost connection to the radio or O4 unit, so I'll be considering that carefully. I haven't set up failsafe yet except to reduce the amount of satellites to five, but around here I would set it to drop and disarm since there isn't anything else it could do back in the trees. These are both complicated features and there are other videos on them, so I will leave them to someone more experienced. The GPS does use some power, but I'm still getting flight times over 8 minutes on the Pavo 20 Pro with an 850 battery. I think I probably lose 20 seconds, maybe, which is worth it for me. The Secure has a plug on the GPS end, so you could unplug it if flight time is a priority. The M100 is soldered on the GPS end, but the wire came with a plug on the other end. I don't know what it fits, but I had to cut it off. And that's all I've got.